Well, after about a three month hiatus, I'm finally back in the garage, uh, picking away at the Le Mans. And uh, yeah, this, it's been a busy summer. Um, had to step away from the project for a bit. Uh, I got married, uh, did some family vacays with the kids. Um, and some days are just too darn hot to get out here. We have some pretty crazy weather in Canada. If it's not freezing cold, it's, it's steamy hot. And uh, yeah, so it's just too hot to get in the garage some days. But, uh, you know, excuses aside, I'm back out here and I'm ready to tackle the next little project, which is the brake booster. Um, because I am boosting this motor, uh, vacuum becomes an issue sometimes. And when you're racing the car, last thing you want is your brakes to uh, start giving you issues. So I'm swapping from a uh, vacuum brake booster to a uh, hydro boost setup. And they can be quite pricey for these cars for the aftermarket setups. So I'm gonna attempt to do a cheaper version. Hopefully it works. Um, I have a good feeling that it will. So I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm doing and if somebody sees me doing something wrong, feel free to comment and steer me in the right direction. But uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, I've heard of people doing this before and uh, so far everything looks like it's gonna line up correctly. But uh, I'll show you what I'm doing here. So as you can see, I've already removed the brake booster master cylinder. It's over here on the bench. Now, this master cylinder I'm not using is not for a disc disc setup. Um, I actually believe this is for a drum drum, which is probably why I was having such crappy braking issues before. <laughs> um, there's the old hydro boost, or not hydro boost, the uh, uh, vacuum booster. So I'm getting rid of that, and I picked up a, uh, this is a hydro booster out of a early 2000 um, uh, Astro van. So you can get these out of an Astro van or a Safari van. Uh, they didn't have uh, vacuum brake boosters in those vans. So I actually went down to the Wreckers and I pulled this out of a van and uh, this sucker was only about 40 bucks Canadian. And uh, I picked this guy up, which, which will work for um, disc, disc setup. And uh, this was about a hundred bucks. So that's the most expensive part I bought for this whole system. But I couldn't find a system for under, uh, they're about 550 for a, for the cheapest hydro booster setup I could find was about 550 US. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do it cheaper. And 550 only gets you, only gets you the, the, uh, the hydro booster and the master cylinder. And it's not even a Wilwood, it's just a, a cheap one that looks like a factory one, if that's what you want. But uh, I didn't want that. These look a little nicer. Um, Willwood has one of the best names in the market for braking, so why not go with them? So I've got about $140, or no, let's say, let's call it 130 US invested into this. Um, as opposed to starting out at 550 if I was to buy the aftermarket. Um, I do have hoses on order. There's actually a hose kit that you can order to to make a hydro boost setup work with uh, with actually any of the A body cars that you know if you have rack and pinion or or the old steering box style like this it asks you when you order the kit I'll show you the kit once it comes in it's supposed to be in in a couple days but for day, today I'm going to get this set up this bracket there's two different brackets that I found on these vans this bracket I mean, does not work. Like I'll show you when I set it in here. Like you can't use that bracket. The holes don't line up and it's gonna have the whole unit pointing down. I don't want it pointing down. That factory original uh, vacuum assembly, the whole thing was pointing up on an angle. So I'm gonna keep that angle with this because it also will keep it keeps everything away from the the headers a bit um i you know by angling it up 
keeps a little bit more space between the headers and, and my brake so it doesn't get too hot. But after removing this clip, there's a nut here. You can just spin that nut off. Like so. Pull that bracket right off. Pitch it. This is what I made up for it. I took a piece of uh, 3 16 plate that I had laying around, hole saw the hole into it, and these ends I actually cut off the factory bracket that was bolted on here. There's a, a bracket on each side. Um, I just cut the bolts. And then I cut the angle that I needed, this angle here. Got it to where I want it, weld it together. And I, like, this took me less than half an hour to make up. Right, and that just fits right over. Just the way I need it, I gotta put that nut back on. And uh, I'm gonna give her a coat of paint, but yeah, it was really simple. The only other thing I have to do to make this all fit properly is obviously this linkage is different from that linkage. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut it, cut it, weld the two together at the length that I need, and that's a wrap. But all in all, for that setup, 130 bucks as opposed to a $550 one, and hoses you have to buy regardless. So most of these setups are close to $1,000 if you want to do a hydro booster setup. Um, the hose kit that I ordered was uh, 200 US. And I'm hoping that it'll all work properly. I won't have to buy any more fittings. It comes with a bag of fittings. And uh, I mean, if I can do the whole setup for, uh, for under 350 bucks, I mean, that's, to me, that's worth it to get rid of that unit. But uh, let me just quickly throw this together. I'm gonna just kind of quickly bolt it in and I'll show you guys what it looks like. See, it takes up a lot less space. I've got a good amount of room between the uh, the header and whatever that chamber is. And I got a bit of a rake to it, like it, it angles back, like you see just about on every vehicle. And it is below the hood line. So I hope it all works. Um, so I'm just hoping in a couple days my hose kit will come in. And I gotta figure out how to route all the hoses between the pump, steering box, and the brake booster without getting anything too close to any of the exhaust. And uh, that should be that. Okay, skip ahead a couple days. I got the hoses I was waiting for. And it comes like a, as a kit. with all the fittings that I should need, the hoses I should need, and the company I got it from is performanceonline.com. And uh, comes with instructions, comes with a diagram. So I'm gonna do my best to follow this diagram, use the fittings, and see if I can get this to, uh, get this to work. So I've got my fittings in, in the pump here, the, the uh, AN adapters that were supplied in the kit. And I've also got the adapters in the hydro booster as well. I've figured out how I'm gonna run my hoses. I'm just gonna run them down behind the A-arm, along the frame, try and keep them away from the exhaust and I'll bring them up into the, into the pump and into the steering box. And uh, these are not that hard to put together. 
So this is a, a line that I'm starting now. Um, I already cut it to length. You know, I just take your grinder, cut through it. Doesn't hurt to use compressed air below into the end of it because you will have little rubber shavings. If you can focus on that. Not really. You'll get little bits of rubber and stuff that end up inside the hose and you don't want the inside, that inside your pump. So uh, hit it with some compressed air, blow it out. But these fittings, they just unscrew, like you just unscrew them apart. Shove that in there as far as you can. Like I'll show you how, I'll, 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 sh I'll just show you. So there's not much to getting these on. Um, the outside piece like this is threaded inside, but it's reverse thread. So you can screw it on with your hand. Make sure I'm doing it right. So you just crank it down counterclockwise. And you can see inside, see if the camera picks it up or not. Kind of hard to tell. But I've got the hose buried right up to the right up to the taper as far as it'll go. You can kind of see it in there. And then once that's in. Take the other part, it's threaded as well, and it actually screws just into the other half of the fitting. Put a little spit on there, just to make it easier. You just start cranking it in. I'm actually gonna put a mark just to make sure that when I'm screwing it in, that it's not actually pushing the hose out of the fitting, which it shouldn't. It's getting hard to hold. Well, it's not bottomed out, but it's pretty darn tight. So there she be. I know it's black, but I can still see where my, my marker mark was and it hasn't pushed out at all. But that sucker's gotta get tight, because, or it has to be tight, because this hose, it's up to 20, it's good for up to 2,200 pound, or uh, PSI. Uh, it'll probably never get that high, but the pressure side of uh, these power steering pumps are well over a thousand, so I've heard. So you gotta make sure that sucker's in there. Yeah, see that end's buried all the way, but I feel like I'm gonna strip it. If I go any harder. Now it's all the way. So ignore what I said, it will bury all the way. You just gotta put some effort into it. See how she fits. I did have to loosen it off a little bit to clock it properly, because when I, when I stuck it in here, this guy was facing straight up. And you can't really twist the hose around to, to get it to fit. Um, so I did have to put it back in the vise, and I actually put a, another marker mark 
on the hose uh, where the direction I wanted this to point and you had to like, I had to like hold the hose, even though this was in the vise, I had to hold the hose while turning this to clock it correctly. Um, not overly difficult. And to back it off that little bit, should not affect it at all. It's still really tight in there. But that's the first one in, I've got it in back there. Uh, this is the return line up here, which you can tell it's a, it's just a rubber line. It's only good for 300 PSI. It's just a return, so it's much cheaper. And one end's already crimped. That came from factory like that. Or the, the kit came like that, already crimped. But the other end, I'll cut it to length, and then they just give you these hose barbs. It just slides over that, because there's really not much pressure in it. And then more AN fittings and tees together. Uh, so I'm going to get going on that too, and I'm going to do the... The pressure line right now that goes from the pump up to the brake booster that's this guy here so i gotta mark that cut it clock it correctly tighten it down but uh this is a really simple kit so i'm gonna mark and cut those and i'll show you what it looks like okay and the low pressure side the return side was super easy you can see i got my my t back in there and those, like the hose just pushes onto those barbs, like I told you. And, uh, you know, you put a little bit of grease on the, the end of the barb and it pushes right in. I'm, I still have to put clamps on it, like this clamp's just sitting there. Like I still have to go around and clamp everything. But, uh, yeah, you can just cut that hose with a knife. There's, there's no metal in it. It's just low pressure. But everything's all run nice. I still got to tighten these down, but that's how they're going to run. I'm gonna have a clamp around all this stuff down here on the frame. But all in all, I think it took me about 45 minutes to plumb everything, cut everything, get it all screwed together. So this kit was super easy to put in. Like you got the picture right there, shows you how to do everything, tells you which fitting to put where. If you feel like reading, you can read the instructions too. The picture is good enough though. Super easy though. Hopefully it all works, but that's it for that. Next up, next video anyway, will be intercooler. Starting to mount the intercooler. But that's all for today. That's the, uh, the brake system, power assist system anyway. Done. Later.